about um, the season that we're in. Um, I got a, as Daniel would say, I believe a humdinger this morning. Um, don't forget our revival. Um, it's uh, going to be on the 10th of January. Um, we'll start that Sunday morning. We'll go through Wednesday. So Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, Carol, we need to be praying for um, Jane's sister. She has the coronavirus and in the hospital. Our old two staff is very low. Um, so we need to continue to pray for her and the hospital staff. So we're, we're, we're going to have to end the service. Um, um, we're going to do what we did with uh, Sister Peggy. We're going to um, bring somebody up and anoint them and everybody stretch their hands forward and, and then um, we pray. And then um, we're just going to believe for a miracle. And we're going to use uh, Michael Stansel, which is a Pastor, a friend of mine, that's pastored in, um, uh, he was pastored in Northside Hospital at one time. Um, he's no underlying condition or anything, he's 49, I think. And um, he's struggling. He's on the ventilator and everything, so we need to definitely try to remember um, them. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. Um, it's on. We definitely need to remember Wanda. I know her treatment she's having. There's several in the church that we need to be praying for. A um, few announcements. Um, we're going to do a Christmas dinner uh, in the best way that we know how. Um, we're going to do it with pre order. Uh, so if you know anybody, elderly people or people that don't have much for Christmas, uh, really don't have a big family. Or, Somebody that's in need um, for a good Christmas dinner, we're going to do that. Um, we have said it was the 19th, but I'm at the 20th, but it's actually the 19th on Saturday. Um, uh, it'd be from 11 to 3. If you, if you know anybody that, that has that, that needs that, um, we need to pre order, we need to sign up, that way we know how much it brings. Um, we'll probably have a few extra plates just in case somebody just shows up, but it'd be nice to have a pre-order. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet out in the uh, foyer um, that um, you can sign up for dressing, mac and cheese, mashed potatoes, and green beans. Uh, and then the church is going to buy the ham, and uh, we'll cook that um, and have that up here. So. Just four things, I kind of like that, except for everybody gets the same thing. Um, we're going to try to do a dessert, um, Mr. Troy. No. Try a dessert. So, so then four things. Um, you know, some of that's very simple. Green beans, and then just, just to kind of um, do that, mac and cheese, dressing, mac and cheese. We may get some kind of wine rose or something to go with it. outside um, if you would like to help cook for that or come up here and, 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 um, and help um, uh, prepare the plates that would be good all right revival 20th i'm looking so forward to this revival i love having a new year's revival i'm not going to lie to you i get a good call every year i get overweight <laughs> I don't, I don't do, I don't do much. Uh, business is slow, so I get in one or two. Um, uh, physically, a lot of times spiritually, so I really need this revival um, to get to start things for the new year. Just hoping 2021 is a lot better than 2020. Amen. Amen. Um, that's what we're going to do. Uh, we need to go to the 10th. Um, all right, everybody, stand. 
because he started falling for the temptation of doubt and fear. He started falling for the temptation of the surroundings around him. His eyes got off the master, so the Bible says that he started to sink. What happened though? They got Peter back on the water. The Bible says that Peter put his eyes back on Jesus. He put his focus back on Jesus. His eyes was on the master, so therefore he didn't fall for the sin that was around him. If we are going to be able to live the Christian life that God's called us to live, if we're going to be the, if we keep our eyes on the Master, if we keep our focus on Jesus, which gives us every opportunity, I'm tired of people using an excuse. Well, we're just sinners in the flesh. Let me tell you this, and I've reminded you of this before. You're only a sinner in the flesh one time. The Bible says that when you get saved, that you are a born again child of God. Don't mean that we won't sin, but you're not a sinner in the flesh anymore. You are a new creation, born again, child of God. That is who you are. That is your identity. You're not a sinner in the flesh anymore. Don't mean that you're perfect. I'm not saying that, but I'm telling you right now, you're only a sinner in the flesh one time. When you get born again, you are cold hairs with Christ. When our focus is on Him, when our eyes is on Jesus, the temptations that surround us and they, they come against us, the wiles of the devil, the opportunity to get out of that thing is there if we got our eyes on the Master. You see the story of the dog, he never looked at the meat. If he, had, if he would have looked at the meat, the temptation would have been too great to overcome. So he looked steadfastly in the master's eyes and never took his eyes off of him. Satan knows how to dangle that thing in front of your face. Amen? He knows how to lure you. He knows your weakness. What did I tell you? He's like a roaring lion seeking him to make the power. But I, I, we know as well as anybody, and I've told this story here before, that the, 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 the lion always goes after the weakest one. If you're in this room and you're spiritually weak, you're spiritually weak because you're not getting in your word. You're spiritually weak because you're not praying. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. I'll tell you how to get out of the temptation. But if you're spiritually weak because your, your mind is set on this or that or whatever is going on or the circumstance or the situation, then you become weak enough for the enemy to attack. Yeah. And therefore, you will fall for the temptation. It just said, unless you fall, Today, get your eyes off the temptation and get your eyes on the master. If you have tr trouble focusing on Jesus in the midst of the trials and temptation, you haven't learned how to live a Christian life. Christian life is knowing the presence of Christ, knowing that he never leaves us, that he's around us, that he's in us, that he's before us, that he's behind us. Being a Christian is knowing that God never leaves thee nor forsake thee. Being a Christian knows that God is in the middle of everything. And I've told you this before, when Jesus comes on the scene, things change. When we allow him to be in the midst of our marriage, when we allow him to be in the midst of our workplace, when we allow him to be in the midst of our problems, when we allow him to be in the midst of the temptation. Man, we all have temptation. I never forget one time I told a person, Foolishly. I was like, man, I, he was talking about a struggle that he had. And I said, man, I don't have to deal with that. I never deal with that temptation. I never deal with, with, with the temptation that, and there was a lot of eyes in that. Put back in scriptures up there. Start with the first verse again. So the first one that I gave you. First Corinthians chapter. Wherefore let him that think if he stand, take ye, lest he fall. I told him, I said, I never fall for that temptation. I never deal with that issue. From that moment on, I started struggling with the same issue that person was. There was too many eyes in there. Take heed unless you fall. We need to realize that, hey, without Jesus, we will fall. Without Christ being part of our lives, without us keeping our when we take people, listen to me, when we put self in control, then we will fall. Next verse. Therefore, has no temptation taken you but such as common to man. How is it common to man? I want to tell you something. We're going to learn about Jesus here in a minute. But I want we, we want to learn that he is dealing with the same temptations the Bible says that you deal with. 
Sometimes we feel alone. Sometimes we feel like there's nobody around. But I'm telling you, man, that Jesus is dealing with the same temptation. Why would Jesus deal with the same temptations that we deal with? Because he wants to know the depths of our infirmities. He wants to know how much they would, hey, how, how enticing things is so he knows how much mercy you need. Amen? I need mercy. I want to tell you right now, the only difference in me and that guy that was out there all night partying and drinking and drugging, that guy that was out there with the needle in his arm, is mercy and grace. That's it. The only difference for me and that drunkard that gets up every morning and has to put a drink in his mouth to get through the day is mercy and grace. So without that mercy and grace, without that, without that gift that God's gave me, without that free gift of salvation, I'd be out there doing the same thing if not dead right now. So I need mercy and grace. More grace. More. And I'm going to tell you, God's got more grace. He's got more mercy. He's got more love. <laughs> to override your shortcomings, your setbacks, your, I can't do it. Man, there's nothing to make me more mad than anything for my son to say, I can't. Why can't you? I can't. And I want to tell you, there's too many I can't when God says, I can do. All things through Christ which strengthens me. I can't overcome the sin of eating. Whoa. I'm just talking about myself. Yes, I can. I can do all things. If I keep my eyes on Jesus and focus on him and get my eyes off the temptation, and that may just seem little to you. Maybe you're struggling somewhere else. I can't not get angry. I can't not lose my temper. I can't not focus on the situation. I can't not worry. Well, mama's just going to worry. That's a lie straight from the pits of hell. Mamas choose to worry. When the Bible says worry for nothing but with prayer and supplication, make your request known unto God. There ain't nothing wrong with being concerned about your children. Ain't no wrong, nothing wrong, but you better be giving them children to Jesus and trusting in Him to take care of them. Amen. Instead of worrying and stressing on yourself. I'll never forget how my aunt and my cousin, well, man, he was on drugs really, really, really bad. And I'll never forget, we got him in the ranch down there. And I'll never forget the, 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 the moment that, that, man, we was, I was taking him in there. And, and then most addicts, and right before they go in a program, they're going to go, they're going to go get spun out before they go. They're going to go get high and just live it up right before they go. And, man, I picked him up, man, he was just, I mean, he was blitzed. And I'm bringing him down there to the ranch. And his mom was so excited because she knew I was preaching down there. She knew what, what would happen. And she, she was a spirit-filled woman. And I, I'll never forget, I'm on the way down there. And I'm friends with his probation officer. He calls me and he says, bring him down here before you go. And, I, and I'll never forget, I, I put him in there. And, and man, they arrested him right there on the spot. When he went out and done his little thing, his little trip, he went so dope to an undercover cop. And, and, and man, it was a, they locked him up. They didn't let him go to the ranch. And I'll never forget having to drive home to his mama and they look at his mama and I and saying he didn't get to go. Uh, they, they arrested him. And boy, she just fell down on the floor. Uh, I, I mean, like a, this dropped like a bag of hammers and it started squalling. I couldn't believe it. And all of a sudden she just jumped up. She started praising God. I'm like, how in the world? You see, this woman had a faith that God had a plan. She had faith that God had something better. The temptation of falling on her face and trusting in herself to get through the problem and trusting in her emotions and her feelings was, was, was overwhelming and she fell down, but all of a sudden something happened. But God, and I'm going to tell you right now, there may be situations in your life right now that you can't see no end to. You can't see no good in it. You can't see no end, the good, good outcome of it. I'm telling you right now, God has a plan for you and a plan on the cross for you not to harm you. That man went in there. He got, he, he, he got in jail for a little while. They let him go to the ring. He went down there and come out of that ranch. After about four or five months, he started preaching the word of God. I'm telling you, when God has a plan, it happens. We just got to get on boat with God's plan. We got to get out of the temptation of doubt and fear, worry and stress, hurt and pain, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. I know everybody in here probably, except most of me anyway, deal with the lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes, I kind of had it. The pride of life, it's all about me. Every one of us deal with me sometimes. I'm the world's worst, I got to get mine. Huh? 
It's got to be about me. I got to sit in the best stand when I go hunting. I got to, I got to win every ball game. I got to do whatever it may be. Life's about me sometimes, a lot of times, most of the time. And we've got to get out of that. That's a temptation that lures us to self-please and self-indulge and self-habit. I want to tell you, it's not God. If you have trouble focusing on Jesus, I like that, in the midst of the temptation, you haven't learned how to live a Christian life. When temptation comes, our focus better be on the Master. Christian life is knowing the presence of Christ in your life. It's praying without ceasing. It's setting your affections on things above. How many of us in here really do that? Well, I'm so emotional. <laughs> How many of us are setting our affections on things of us? How many of us is living, living kingdom mind and sitting in heavenly places? The Bible says that we have opportunity to sit in heavenly places. I want to tell you, if we're sitting in heavenly places, there is going to be no doubt. There is going to be no fear. There is going to be no sickness. There's no stress. There's no thing. When our mind is sitting in heavenly places, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Hebrews chapter 3 says this. if you don't mind. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14 <clears throat> says this, See then that we have a great high priest, this is so good, God, that is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, the Master, the one that we keep our eyes on. <laughs> Let us hold fast our profession. You profess it. You confess it. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly. Come on, somebody. How many of us is really going boldly to the throne of God? How many of us is living in con condemnation when there is no condemnation to those that's in Christ Jesus? I can say this because I know that because I've been there and I've done that. How many of us can go boldly to the throne of God knowing who we are? How in the world is that even possible that we can go boldly to the throne of Jesus? It's the same way when we bow our knee to him on the day of judgment. How can we go up there, and I've told you this before, and him say, good and faithful servant, there's nothing good in me. There's nothing good about me. Only through Christ is there any good. No man in Christ is no not one. So how in the world can I go boldly to the throne? It's because the blood of Jesus covers me. It's who I am. It's my identity. If we just know who we are, we can walk this thing out. If we just know in the midst of the temptation, let your eyes go on something that it may not. If we just know that we are Christ's life, that we are made in the image of God, if we just know who we are, that we're not whoremongers, that we're not fearful, <clears throat> that we're not addicts, if we know that we're not that, no matter what it tries to snare us and pull us and drag us, we can tell Satan we don't have time for that because that's not who we are. I'm not, listen to me, I'm not a fearful, I'm not a fear monger. I'm not a, a whore monger. And that, that, hey, listen to me, I'm not talking about when you're by, I mean, you can be a spiritual. Jesus said that you commit adultery. How did he do it? He was talking about you commit it spiritually. You're cheating on him. So when we indulge in endowment and, and other things, we're, we're committing spiritual adultery. Amen? But if we know who we are, if I know that I am a child of the King, that I know that my destiny, my future, my everything is based on who I am in Christ, when I know that, it will change me. It will change my thinking. It will change my emotions. It will change my identity. Wow. Looky here. Let us go boldly. How can we go boldly to the throne of grace? That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Why do we need mercy? Because we're a mess. Amen? Maybe you just got to polish your crown once a week. I don't know, but I'm a mess. Come on, Ryan can be a, 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 a dummy sometimes. I don't want to say idiot. And I can walk in my emotions.
emotion just as much as the next guy. I can get my heart set on a ball game or, or whatever just as much as the next guy. I can take too much. I, I can lose my temper just like the next guy. So I need grace. I need mercy. Amen. I make mistakes. Your pastor makes mistakes. Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 18 says this. For in that himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. He is able to help them. Do you know that there's an answer to your problem today? <clears throat> Whatever it is that you're struggling with, Whatever it is that's setting you back, let me tell you something. If it's taken from your life, there's so many things in our life that take from our life that we don't want to get out of our life. Amen? Man, I don't worry about this. I don't care what happens. It's my little baby. I'm going to take it. I'm going to cuddle it. There ain't nothing. I don't want it. I mean, I hate this worry. I hate this stress. I, I hate this problem that I have. But I'm not going to give it to Jesus. I might come up pray about it. I'll pick it right back up and I'll leave. Whatever it may be. There's so many things that God wants to take from you, deliver you from. Whether it's a little habit that you have that you know is taking you from God and not to God. Whether it's just a, something that you're doing on the side or maybe it's something simple and a little leaven's living a whole low, maybe it's just something that uh, it's just who you are. Let me tell you, it's not who you are. You're not a worry word. God says, I want to heal you, cure you, mend you. You said, I come to mend that which is broken. But you've got to lay, lay down if you will. You've got to allow God. You've got to get rid of the temptation. <laughs> I wonder if we had a a, 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 a truth sermon here, if you will, and, and we told exactly what our setbacks is and our hurts and our, I don't want to know. He already knows. Amen. He already knows. He's just sort of like a, I love for my son to ask me for something. I know what he wants most of the time. It's not like for him to ask. I want to hear you. God wants to hear you today. And himself has suffered temptation. He has suffered temptation. He is able to help thee, to cure thee to those that are tempted. I wrote here, for we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted as we are. He knows how you feel today. For in that he was tempted, he is able to help those that are tempted. Why do you think Jesus went into the wilderness? We'll go with that. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Boy, I think I'm, I start from verse 1. Yes, there you go. Then was Jesus led. Look at this. I want you to think about this. He was led up. He was led to. The Spirit led him. The Spirit wants to lead us. I am not telling you it's going to lead us into temptation, but the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit, which let me tell you this right here. This is so good. My mind was wrong by me even thinking of this this morning, and I'm going to tell you my opinion on it. And if I tell you my opinion, I usually say, this is my opinion. But I want to tell you what happened was Jesus had just had the dove descend on him, the Holy Spirit descend on him. And immediately, the Bible says, it led him into the wilderness. But as the dove descended and the Holy Spirit power came in him, the Bible says that God said, This is my beloved Son, who am I well, and who I am well pleased. Think about that for a moment. And I thought about the moment that I got saved and the Holy Spirit descended on me, came in me, came part of me. I wonder, in my opinion, if God is saying, This is my beloved Son, who I am well pleased. Because I want to tell you, the Bible says that we are sons and daughters of God, that we become tall heirs with Christ. Then this is to me that God looks at us the same, if you will. And I wonder how pleased God is with us. I want to tell you, and the blood of Jesus flying on us, he is well pleased. You're his beloved son. And the Bible says the Spirit led him. Led him. Let me tell you something right now. The Bible says there's no temptation he won't give you a way out of it. And I really believe Jesus was led into the wilderness for 40 days. And guess what happened? The Bible says that he started preparing himself. <laughs> he knew the temptation was coming. He knew the trial was coming. Jesus went about it the best way that he knew how. He 
prepared his body. He prepared his mind. 40 days of fasting. And I'm going to tell you right now, I thought about that today. It's hard for get anybody to fast for one meal, one day. Jesus did it for 40 days to prepare himself for the temptation. He knew the temptation would be strong. He knew that he had to be one with the Father, which he was. But he knew that he had to get in a point where the temptation wouldn't be strong enough to override him. And I'm going to tell you right now, the problem with us today is we're not preparing ourselves for the temptation. We just go around zippy do da zippy day doing our own thing. Living our own life. We're not in the Word. Jesus knew the Word. How did, he, how did he fight off the temptation? The Bible says that Jesus said it is written. How many of us really know the Word enough to know that that temptation that we make excuse for daily, how do we know the Word enough to say, well, it is written that I ain't supposed to do this. It is written that I can be stronger through this. It is written, and I'm going to tell you right now, we're not preparing ourselves for the temptation. Therefore, the enemy is winning. That's why we're living half less than lives. Spiritually, we're not preparing ourselves. The Bible says Jesus fasted and prayed. How many of us is really praying? I ain't talking about your little bitty by prayer. Come on. I told you I start my day with God. I end my day with God. But I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of times it's a vain repetition of prayer. A little bitty by prayer, if you will. Same one that I said when I was five. Come on. How many of us are spending time praying without ceasing, keeping our mind and our heart and our eyes on Jesus, the Master? Therefore, the temptation can't get us. I know it's hard to fast. I'm not going to call you to do a fast. If the Lord calls you to do a fast, you better do it. But I'm going to tell you, we, we can't fast today. Jesus prepared himself mentally, physically for the temptation of the enemy. How much are you preparing yourself? For the temptation. Jesus said, watch and pray lest the enemy tempt you. Jesus said, watch and pray. That's two things. I'll get to them in a minute. You see, the notice the dove sending on him. I don't think that, that Christ went into the defense here. Listen to this. I want you to say this. I want you to notice this. I want you to know this nugget. The Bible says that Jesus was led into the, in, into the wilderness. Jesus wasn't on the defensive here. You see, if the army leads into battle, it is going on the offensive attack. And I'm going to tell you, I believe a lot of times we as Christians are on the defense. We sit back and we hope the enemy don't come and we try to fire off the darts that he's coming at and we're on the defense. Jesus was led into. I'm telling you right now, God wants to lead you into this world. He wants to lead you into lost folks' life. He wants to lead you into fat pastors. We're sitting there on the, we're, we're, we're sitting there on the scrubs. If you look at Jeremiah, it talks about being led into the Fat pastor. Ain't talking about me. I'm talking about God has something planned for you. God wants to lead you in. I think it's sometimes, I think it's about time that we went on the offensive attack. The weapons are our warfare and our harm. But mighty through God. Why are we sitting back on the defensive end and hoping the devil just don't get to us too much? Why are we not out taking it to the devil? The Bible says the gates of hell will not prevail against Christ. Why are we not taking it to the devil? Why are we not going on the offense? Why are we all the time on the defense? Oh, we read our word. We may pray. We may, uh, we may sit at the house. We may watch it on TV. We may do the things that we're supposed to do. But how much of the offensive are we taking? How much are we being led by the Spirit? Jesus was led by how much are we being led by and attacking the enemy the way that we need to be attacking? I wrote here, he was led, he was led to prove victory over sin so that he can show you victory over sin. The wilderness is a place where you're alone in the natural. But he wasn't alone in the supernatural. Amen. Maybe you're alone in the natural, in your situation, in your circumstance. But I promise you this right now, in the spiritual, 
in the supernatural, you're not alone. Amen. God is going to fight a battle for you. The battle's already been won. Jesus won the victory on the cross. Yes, amen. It's already won. Your, your, your victory is for sure. Your life of abundance is for sure. The kingdom of God is at hand for sure. You just need to reach out and grab it. Quit being on the defense and then go on the offense and start taking your inheritance. Be a, hey, listen to me. Just like the Israelite had the promised land waiting on them. And they journeyed for 40 years because why? They didn't have vision of it. I'm telling you, get your vision for God. Get your vision for, the, for, for, for your identity. Get your vision for your health. Or whatever it is, get your vision that God has for you. And go on the offense and go take it. Take it. Take what's yours. I love what you have said this week. Gideon, the small army would took what was rightfully there. There's so much rightfully yours, spiritually. Your joy. Your joy. Your happiness. Your life. Is yours. Jesus paid a price for you to have it. Victory. To walk with your head held high. To get up in the morning. <laughs> Say, you know what a glorious day. But you've got to take it. You've got to go after it. I was going to preach on fire this morning. And I may next week. I may the week after. I may kick it through three messages around. Hope they ain't going to be one of them. But the fire don't fall unless there's a sacrifice. <laughs> I want to tell you right now, if you want fire to fall from God in your life, you must sacrifice yourself. You must deny yourself. You must die to your emotions, your feelings, your situations, your shortcomings. Let Jesus come into it. Let the fire fall in it. You must sacrifice. Amen. Yes, Amen. 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 Real quick, last verse, and I'm going to close. Ephesians chapter 6. I did a whole four, five, six, whatever part message on this. And I want to challenge you. I challenge you to do this. And I ain't done it as much as I should. But I'm going to give you a little, little, little setup for what God is wanting to do and what I feel like this morning through prayer, what he was telling me to tell you today. And I want you to try this. If you want me to take picture take it to you, I will. I'm going to get my wife to print out some if you want one of them. But I'm going to tell you a, a way that we can wake up in the morning and we can put on the armor of God. But look at here. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And in our own self, we can do nothing. If I wake up in Brian Scott every morning, I will walk out in my emotions, my feelings. It don't matter how good life is. I'm always concentrating on the bad things if I'm not concentrating on God. You'll concentrate on your problems in life. You'll look at the glasses half full. We are born, most of us are born to think negative in our life without Jesus. We got to know Him. We got to walk in the power of His mind. If I'm going to overcome temptation, whether it's a, a, a eating disorder, whether it's, a, whether it's fear, whether it's doubt, whether it's stress, come on, that's a big part of my life. If I'm going to walk that out, <laughs> I'm walking it out in me, but if I can do it in the power of his mind, I can overcome it. The Bible says that we're more than overcomers. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. There's never opportunity for us to live out the, the identity that Christ has for us. We just got to do it. We got to do it in the power of his mind. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. Come on. What are you standing for today? What are you standing in? Are you standing in faith? Are you? Are you really standing on the promises of God? Or are you standing in the wiles of the devil? Anything that's, listen to me, anything that's negative in your life is not of God. God wants to put positive things in your life. Amen. Paul can write the book. Uh, I, I think it's two thirds of the New Testament. He could write that by having the joy of the Lord when he was in the middle of trials, when he was in the middle of temptation, when he was in being beaten and shipwrecked and stoned and jailed. He wrote that. 
And I've told you this before, I know, but he had something on the inside that the outside couldn't take. I'm sure Paul was praying about ceasing continuously, mind on the rise, eyes on the master, eyes on the master. No matter what was waiting in front of him, even though he could smell it, even though he might have even almost taste it, he never put his eyes on it. Put the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. I want to tell you right now, there is opportunity for you to stand against the law of the devil. Amen. Amen. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Ain't nobody your enemy. The enemy is the devil. He tries to blow everything in your show. Come on, sickness is not your enemy. Come on. Doubt, fear, worry, stress. It might be a part that's trying to destroy you, but I'm going to tell you right now, God has a plan for you. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It goes on to talk about the full armor of God. What to put on. But I want to talk about watch and pray. Jesus said, Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Lest you fall into temptation. How many of us is really on guard? How many of us is walking around daily watching for the enemy? I'm going to tell you right now if you just open your eyes, the enemy is, is, is he attacks. Enemies all around us. So much hurt, so much pain, so many bad things going on in this world. He's all around. He'll watch. He's there. And I want to tell you right now, I believe in the power of God. I've seen the power of God. I know the power of God. And I know this right now, but greater is he than the temptation that's around us. We just got to believe. We got to be watchful. We got to be on guard. And we got to pray. Jesus said, if you'll watch, recognize, and pray, it will keep you from the hour of temptation. How many of us is watching and praying? My prayer, and I hope that some of you will agree with me and pray this prayer when we wake up in the morning. Lord, I put on the full armor of God. We need to be able to put on the full armor of God. If we're going to stand against the wiles of the devil, put on the full armor of God that you can stand. Is it a promise from God? That if we put on the armor, if we are prepared, he's saying you can stand against the wiles of the devil. Why would he say that if the opportunity was not there? I put on the full armor of God today where I can stand against the evil in this day. Having done all to stand, doing everything that I can to stand. I girt my loins with the truth. If you want to go and pray about the truth in your life, I'm going to tell you right now, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm not asking you to pray the exact same prayer. I'm just asking you to put on the full armor of God. If you'll do that, you can stand. If you say, I, I put on the truth, Lord, because you are the truth, everything else is a lie. It's the enemy that's lying to me. It's the enemy that gets, causes doubt. It's the enemy that tries to distract me, deter me. You're the truth. Your truth says that I am more than, not less than. However you want to pray, however you want to go into that. But what he's saying here is put this on every morning. If you put it on, Paul says this right here. In my own words, I'll say it like it says, because I don't know the scripture right now. But Paul said, I put me on some Jesus Christ. If we will get up in the morning and put on Jesus, if we'll be in the hands and feet of Jesus, temptation will have no foothold on our life. If we'll get up and be like him, love like him, trust him, believe in him, listen to me, do unto others as we would have them do unto us, do them the least of them as, as we would do to God, I'm telling you right now, it would change our world. I put on my best plate of righteousness. Without him, we have no righteousness. It's got to be through him. No man is righteous, no not one. But through him are we righteous. I shod my feet with the preparation of the gospel. Are we really prepared to share the gospel? Really? Is anybody in this room, or the, or, or there's some in this room, that's really prepared to share the gospel to a lost and dying generation? Above all, 
I will take the shield of faith. Do we have faith? We have faith. Listen to me right now, man. What is faith? Faith is, listen to me. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence. Listen to me. Evidence. Evidence. God has done a lot in your life. Amen? Amen. God has done so much in your life. If you'll look around your life, if you're really born again, God can leave you where he found you. If you are really born again, God didn't leave you in addiction. If you're really born again, God didn't leave you in that sin. If you're really born again, God made you more than that. And I'm going to tell you, we need to remind ourselves of who God is in our lives. If you have faith that he did it before, as David slew the back of the giant because he slew a lion in the bears, because his God was with him. If you have faith, you can remove the mountain. Amen? He says that I will take on the shield of faith. My prayer is that you take on the shield of faith so I can quench the fiery darts of the wicked. I put on my helmet of salvation. Why? Because that's who we are. I carry the sword of the spirit of the word of God. How many of us have really had this word in our heart but we will not sin against him? How many of us is carrying the word in our mind? How many of us is just carrying the word period? And I will pray without ceasing. What are we praying for? Praying that the temptation of God will come. But praying that others would know Jesus. Praying and thanking God for what he's done for us in our life. Like I said, that's just looking over Ephesians chapter 6. And that's clothing yourself in the armor of God. I challenge you to do so. I challenge you. I'm going to do it. I'm going to type that up. I'm not going to do it the same thing every morning. But I'm going to pray for the truth. I'm going to thank God for my salvation. I'm going to be prepared for the gospel. How many of us is really willing to put on the full armor of God that we can stand? We're falling. The church is falling. I'm not talking about witness outreach. I'm talking about the church in general. The Bible says in the end, which I think we're closed, there'll be a coming to and a falling away. I think the church is falling in a lot of areas. Got comfortable. Let's get out of our comfort zone. Let's get on the offense and quit sitting back on the defense. Here we bow it around the phone. The opportunity. The opportunity to walk in the joy of your salvation is right out here. Well, do you do that? That's up to you. David didn't say he lost his salvation. He said he lost the joy of it. I believe sometimes we live a defeated life, although we know Christ. Although we have a relationship with him, we live a half less than life. When God says he wants to make all things new, all things whole, wants to lead you out of temptation. Man, every one of us deal with it. Let's be real. Whether it's something we watch on TV or some of the things we say and we do. How do we overcome it? How do we beat it? Of his mind. We've got to put on the armor of God so we can stand. The word of God promises if we put on the armor of God that we can stand. The Bible says the time is set that if you're here today and you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, there's an opportunity for that too. But if you know him, Maybe you're just living in some fear, some doubt, some stress, some worry. Maybe you're just falling short. Jesus will never leave you alone. You can't do all things through Christ who strengthens you by the power of his mind. We're going to open this altar up. Everybody's going to stand.
whatever your need is today.